Hey, welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to be switching it up a little bit and go into a 76 Ford utility truck. No, we are not going for the Carolina squat look. Just so happens at the top of this fender and the top of that wheel has a gap because it's missing the motor. Guys, in this video, we got to get that Ford 360 back in the engine bay of this truck. Get that gap to close up a little bit and get it back on the road. Okay, here's the current situation. We got blocks over here, we got heads over there. We've got a mess to clean up here. These ain't so bad, they've been soaking in the parts cleaner for a few weeks. Uh, we got rockers over there, we've got lifters that way, we've got push rods over there. We've gotta get these two together. And to do that, I think we're gonna need some parts. I think we're gonna need a lot of parts. We're gonna need a water pump. We're gonna need new timing gears and a new timing gear chain. We're gonna need a new oil filter and we're gonna need a new fuel pump. We're gonna want new belts, guys, because I cannot stand a new rebuild squeaking going down the road. We've got cams, we've got lifters. We've got push rods and distributors. We've even got thermostats, spark plugs, and fuel senders. I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of me talking about parts, so I'm not going to talk about the freeze plugs. The new clutch. The new gas tank. The massive amount of gaskets. Or even the new alternator. So we got the block all cleaned up. Well, as clean as I am going to get it here in my little shop. Um, this is ready to get the cam. It's ready to get its new oil pan, get all its gaskets, freeze plugs, and a little bit of rebuild. Time to put these heads back together. Uh, I do have some new valve, se valve seals for them, so we've got to get the valve springs off. Um, but in doing so, flipped this over, was getting them all cleaned up. I had a, uh, a bent rod, bent push rod on number five. Well... May have done some more damage. Let me get you in there. So the plan was not to replace all the the valves. Uh, I was just basically going to clean these up, grind down the seats, and put the original ones back in. However, one of these does not look the same at all. That would be number five. That is where we had a bent push rod also. So my thought is, there was nothing wrong with the piston. This was seated up. I think what was happening, this was never able to open up. So, well, the exhaust gases decided they're going to make their own way of coming out. So we got to get the new valves for all these. I will be waiting for parts for that. Um, but until then, let's get all these blown apart, maybe cleaned up a little bit better. All right, so one of the ways to get these springs off is use a, a spring compressor. I got a little cheapy one you put down over top of the spring to crank this down and get the keepers out. But I prefer the old socket and hammer method. And that's pretty much putting it over top of the keeper and well, getting the keepers out of there. So the keepers go flying. Hopefully you can keep them all together. <laughs> keep the keepers all together and take your springs out. So, I'll get the rest of these out. You guys stay right there. So here is that valve. A little bit crispy.
right, we got the valves out. We got the valve springs out. We are waiting for those valves to come in. Hopefully they'll be here by the end of today or early tomorrow morning. But regardless, we have to wait for parts. So you guys sit right there. I'll sit here and wait by the curb for FedEx or UPS or USPS, whichever one it comes in. So in the video editing world, I'm gonna snap my fingers and they're gonna show up. See, and just like that, we got all new parts. We got new valve seals, we have new valves, we've got intake and we've got exhaust. Our heads are even cleaned up. And somehow, it also got me to uh, change my shirt. Probably should, probably should snap my fingers more often if I can get all this done in a matter of. Anyways. So we're gonna put the valve seals in, we're gonna put the new valves in, and before we do that, what I like to do is I like to take the old valves, I like to put some of this grinding count compound on it, and really get those valve seats nice and cleaned up. Uh, this is pretty much just a suction cup thingy, goes on the valve, spin the valve. Uh, we're gonna clean the seats up. So here you go. As you can see, the valve seats on all four cylinders are uh, pretty dirty. Before I put the new valves in, I'm going to take this compound like I showed you a second ago. Valve grinding compound. We're going to screw a little bit of that on, I don't know, three points or so. I'm going to stick that in. Put the seat nice and, nice and good. Stick that on there. And we turn. It's really hard to do one handed. Doesn't want to stay on there. Let me, uh, let me put you guys down. get no better than that probably does probably gets a whole lot better all right let's go ahead and get these valves in This fancy valve spring compressor that never really works. <sighs> yeah. Just gotta set it to our valve tension, get it to compress, and hopefully I can get them keepers on there. But I need to turn this so I can actually get under it. <sighs> Operate both at the same time. weapon 
All right, that's one head rebuilt. It's got new valve seals. We've got new valves. It's been cleaned up as best as I'm gonna clean it up. Everything seems to be going a-okay. Still gotta grind off a little bit of the, or clean up a little bit of the gasket on there. But overall, we're ready to put that back on the block. Just gotta do that one. Yay. Oh, can you guys hear that? It is raining. Oh, but it makes it feel so nice in here. All the cold air rushing in. Huh. At least I got my grass mowed. So the heads are done. Now it's time to get these heads on this block. But before we put the heads on the block, we've got to get this new camshaft slid right up it. Well, I'm not going to say where it's going to have to slide, but it's got to slide right here all the way through. Um, I'm going to lube this thing up pretty good. Just some assembly lube. Uh, anything off the shelf where they got this Lucas Oil assembly lube as well. Whichever one I grab first is the one I'm going to use. Uh, we got lifter soaking. After we get the cams in, we're going to drop all the lifters in, get the heads on, get the push rods in. Hopefully it's going to start looking like a motor again. So, <laughs> Let's get her gooey. Now I'll get a bolt, same thread and pitch size, and I put it on the end. They do make a tool that slides on the back and it's kind of a longer handle, but it seems to work out okay for what everything I've had to use. <coughs> so let's get it down in there. Add it in, slid it out. There we go. Stay in there. Stay in there this time. All right. So we got the lifters. They've been soaking over here in my fried rice container for, I don't know, a couple hours. You ain't got to soak them that long. I've heard some say soak them overnight, let them fill up, let them do this. Guys are flat tap. If they're going to compress, they're going to bleed themselves. I don't know how much you really got to get these to soak up let's get that back closer oh hey i'll quit moving over there so we're just gonna drop them in I just soak it in Rotella oil. Really, whatever oil you're going to run in these trucks or in your car. Just soak them in that. It doesn't really matter to me. I guess it really doesn't matter to the engine either. As long as I get some, some lubrication and some go go juice in it. I want to be my go go juices. Loop. Valve. Lifters. Are in. Get my hands cleaned up. We get some gaskets and we're going to bolt these uh, heads on here. Oh, 
Okay, we are finally ready to put the head gaskets on. Um, I do put a little bit of sealant on these. Some people do, some people don't. I like to put just a smidgen. I mean, a, just a, just enough to kind of coat, lightly coat the head with this, or the, the block with this. <clears throat> don't go crazy with it. This ain't holding nothing, it's just kind of there for my warm and fuzzy. So let me get it. I know on some of these, the metal ones, they do require, it tells you to do it, but I've just been so used to doing all of them. And that's why I'm gonna keep doing it. Just gonna lightly coat it. Ain't gonna hurt nothing to give it a little extra bit of seal. <clears throat> Now, the fellas at old Felpro, they started getting smart with these gaskets. There was a lot of people previous to uh, what I'm about to tell you, putting these gaskets on backwards, upside down, inverted. One went that way, one went that way. Lots and lots of problems. Overheating problems. Overheating problems in the back of the motor, which caused lots of these engines to completely Maybe this is why this one was rebuilt. I don't know. But it has been rebuilt. 30 over. And I can't say 100% that's why. But the fellas over at Felpro started getting a little smart and started putting the word front. Let's say front on these. Um, what was happening is if you look here, well, this one goes this way. This port right here, if you flip this, they didn't have the word front on there. You didn't know which way to orient this. You were gonna block off that back one. This front one, it don't matter. This front one won't blocked off. But we do not want the back one blocked off. That has got to go through the motor to this other side. That is how it's transferred. Or vice versa. If you have this one on, do them both. But ideally you want the back one porting everything out so it goes from the back front to the back, comes to the other side and goes around. So it's important to note the orientation. If you don't have that gasket that says front, don't block off the back ones. With that said, if you don't block this one off, don't flip this one over and block that side off, then you're really gonna be in for it. So on this one, smart fellows done did it right, put the front on the front. That way. important to make sure you put the intake to the intake side and the exhaust to the exhaust side though. Now we do have a torque wrench. We are going to torque these. The old elbow torque is not going to work on heads. Um, you can do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Too many problems with heads. So we're going to torque these to anywhere from 80 to 90. I'm putting these at 85. Uh, but I do it kind of progressive. I'm going to cut that number in half, which is 50. We're going to hit the torque on those. Then we're going to crank it back up to 85 after 50. Finish her out. That's going to give me the warm fuzzy. And we're going to start on the inside, middle two, top. Well, just kind of, just kind of make an X. Just kind of go around in circles. However you want to, but. Start in the front, in the middle, I'm sorry, and work your way out. All right. No, I ain't using this to torque him. I'm just using this to get him started. 
Ooh, that's not good. Just to get them started. Then, then we'll go from there with torque. Threads up a little bit on them. I got some old guys out there that I used to work with going, you're not clicking it three times. You know how to torque. Did you break torque on that before you actually used your tool? No. I didn't. But I ain't heading to three clicks on this one because we ain't torqued yet. Let's go to the 85. We're 78, 80. Three six because it falls into a defect. Now, whew, yeah, that's a lot. Eighty six. Did you hear that three click? Oh man, so I used to be a aircraft mechanic in the old Air Force, so that's where the whole torquing thing come from, and breaking torque, checking torque before you check it out. We had this makeshift, I don't know, old sockets or whatever in the tool crib that you had to get your torque wrench out, make sure, check the torque, set it to something, whatever you wanted to, highest, lowest, and Make sure she worked before you could put that on an aircraft. Before you could use it on an aircraft. Because you gotta make sure everything's good and tight. You don't really want bolts falling off when you're flying. Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. These bolts, eh. It's a Ford. I mean, bolts fall off these things all the time. All the time. 86. <sighs> Let's get it flipped around. 
and put that thing down, flip it, and reverse it, and something. We're just gonna put that stuff here. Okay, we are gonna get the intake on here. Now, the intake is, uh, I would probably say roughly about 721 pounds. That thing is heavy. It, when these motors get turned in, those get scrapped out to the marine yards for anchors or whatever they can use to weigh some stuff down. They're heavy. So needless to say, with those things being heavy, these seals are gonna seal up pretty good. Um, got cork for the end gaps over here for the front and the back. Uh, I'm also gonna be putting RTV on it. Ultra blue gasket, multi-purpose blue. Ford blue. I don't really think it's Ford blue, but it's blue and it's Ford engine, so it's Ford blue. Uh, I'm gonna be pretty liberal on this end. I am going to just stack it up in the corners. Uh, the cork gaskets work pretty good, but I still like to run a bead on the bottom and the top. That way we know we're good. Nobody wants a leak in intake. We'll get the torque it. Once again, I'm gonna start in the center, work my way out. However you wanna torque it, that's how you should torque it. But this is how I like to torque it. Not twerk it, fork it. Okay. As you can tell, I went around it probably three or four different times. Um, I like to go back and check the torque on mine because it has that gas that's kind of crushing itself and see uh, the torque spec kind of comes off of it. Uh, I think I went back to this one and, and need some more torque and stuff. I'll just keep going around so all of them are going to break that torque wrench and, or until I feel comfortable. And I feel comfortable. So let's get on to the rockers, push rods, everything else. Okay, so. We need to stop for uh, about two minutes. We got to blow out. Look at that. Seal decided to stick his tongue out at us and just uh, not play ball. We're gonna break the torque on these, kind of slide that back in there, retorque. Hopefully, it stays in. All right, we got the seal fixed. It is now time to put the push rods in there. There, 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 there. And let's get the rocker arms installed. Well, a whole rocker arm assembly. These are anywhere from 40 to 45 foot pounds. And I'm going on the high side again on these. Now I'm not doing any progressive torque on these, but 
We're gonna make sure they're good and snug. Because we don't want well, I'll have to make this the right way first. I don't want any loose rockers. Rocker arm assembly, push rods, lifters, intake, motors coming together. Motors coming together. Oh, yeah, that side first. All right, time to get the time and chain cover on your cam gear, crank gear, time and chain. Let's get it all together. Uh, motor might look a little bit different. What I mean is. She got professionally painted by Duplicata. Professional paint job completed. M minus the water neck. We'll, we'll get to that later. Just hold your horses. We'll get to it. All right, so on these cam gears, let's see if I can get you to show them. This one's going to be on the crank itself. So I'll, if you look, there's three different ways this thing can be keyed. You got one that's a square, you got one that looks like kind of a rounded top, we'll call that a circle. And then we got another one that looks like a triangle. Now the difference of those is whether or not it's gonna be advanced or retarded or we're gonna have a stock position. So the one that looks like a triangle, which is in the up position right now, is gonna be advanced. Hmm, didn't do nothing to this motor, so we're not gonna advance it. Now this one right here that looks like a square, that is going to be your retarded. Uh, well, we don't really want to retard the engine either. So we're going to stick to the stock one, which is kind of like a circle shape on the top, if you can see that. And how we know that one's going to be the stock position is if you look right above it, that one has that circle. That means it is the stock position. If you look on your cam gear, let's see if I can get you a good, there it is, oh, right there. If you look right there, you'll see the other circle. Now when we install these, these two circles need to be together, showing us that it's top dead center and everything is in time, in gear, and ready to go. We got the crank gear, 12 o'clock. Now let's get the cam gear and have that circle pointing down at six o'clock. So they're together. Two dots, crankshaft is at 12 o'clock, can is at 6 o'clock. That means we are at top dead center and in time. Um, the centric pin sits flush, nice and flush where you want it. And now we're going to torque that cam bolt. Anywhere from 40 to 45 foot pounds. So I've got it set to about 42. That's where we're going to go with it. All right. Not forget the oil slinger. Make sure it's the right way because this way is going to make a lot of chatter. So we're going to have the little convex portion in. Boop. Here's our chain. Let me slide, let me, uh, get that cleaned up and we'll slide that on there. Okay, we are back. 
I uh, did a few more things off camera. I got uh, some new sensors put in. Uh, finished buttoning up the timing chain. Uh, got all new uh, freeze plugs put in there, some new spark plugs. And for right now, we're going to call this video good to go. Uh, I know there's a whole lot more things to be putting in, like oil filter housings, water pumps, the actual cover, uh, fuel pump, put the fan back on all the goodies that are sitting over here waiting to be put in but i feel like this video is getting a little drug out um we're gonna leave it here because we've got to get the transmission pulled out we gotta get a new clutch on here uh, get the flywheel put on we're gonna pull these i'm sorry we're gonna pull the transmission put them together and then put it back in the truck as one unit um i'm not gonna we're not gonna be doing that on this video but I did want to give you guys a quick, quick little, I say quick, it's about 45 minutes long, so nothing quick about this, but just kind of a quick little, but I did want to get something out showing the progress on this motor. Uh, we've got the oil pan it's sitting over there as well. So hopefully next time you guys see this, we'll be pulling that transmission, mating these together, getting it back in the truck so we can get that gap back down. Guys, thanks for sticking around. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, turn them notifications on and share this with your friends. We'll see you guys next time.